Oh, they are in pink. I know, finally, mate. Well, it's a. Listen, this is an ultimate moment, by the way. I don't believe this. Newcastle United last night lost to Newcastle United. That's the best way of describing the game against Liverpool. They were 10 men down and out for well over an hour. Newcastle could not score that second goal. All of a sudden, Liverpool bred confidence from Newcastle with an opportunity. We threw the game away in a space of 10 minutes. I couldn't believe it. Liverpool fans were shocked. The players, the manager, everyone was shocked. Nobody could believe that Liverpool were actually able to, to suddenly score two goals out of nothing. Newcastle gave them the goals. Newcastle gave them everything in that game. There's only one person we can blame. Us. But after the match, unfortunately, I would say St James' Park got bout ruled because of how high intense the game was. Liverpool and Newcastle fans butt heads. Now, to be fair, it might sound like a bit negative was Liverpool fans for bragging about the win. But honestly, I thought Newcastle fans were just as bad. Newcastle fans clearly looking to start some after the match. Both sets of fans clearly wanting to do something. There were arrests, there were all sorts going on. Here in this video, I'll show you all. You've seen a little intro clip there. We met Will and A, we met Tino Asperia. We had a rest after the game. There's all sorts to talk about. So if you guys are new around here, I know it's not, I guess, a positive video to talk about, but if you enjoy the content, make sure I get down there, smash the like button, subscribe, you are brand new. Brighten away next week, we have to be better. I mean, for 70 minutes, we're actually quite good, but for 90, it has to be done. I could scream. If we don't be bright next week, I think we're in big trouble already. Once those Champions League games kick in, we're on some serious problems. We have to be able to get the wins now. We can't afford to put more pressure on ourselves. Because otherwise, we do what the majority of teams have done since getting at European football for the first time. It's a long time, and that's drop off. We cannot allow ourselves to drop off. We've come too far now. We've spent so much money. We have to maintain consistency because if we don't, we'll be in big trouble. But yeah, let's show you the match day vlog from yesterday. Just behind me is Louis Liquor Shop. Today at half one, Tino Aspia returns to Newcastle as it goes inside that bar just before the match to meet some Newcastle fans for half an hour. So that the last time Tino has actually met Newcastle United fans at an event, I think was a good 10 years ago. He's such an elusive player. Chances are you're actually not gonna see him again after this event. I mean, this is a guy who lives in Colombia, comes maybe, I don't even know, five, 10 years or so. I mean, this guy doesn't come across much. But I have to say that Barcelona performance has to be the most legendary performance for the Newcastle United player in history. He is one of only three players who have ever been able to score a hat-trick since 1990 in the Champions League against Barcelona. Tino Aspia, Andrei Shevchenko and Kylian Mbappe are the only three players who have done that. Legendary individual, let's go inside there and meet Tino. <laughs> Just to let everyone know, Tino is in the building, he's sat at the back and he will be doing all the greets. So if you just be patient and wait in an orderly fashion, we'll get to you. Once again, guys, we are joined here by Ruben the Slave. We just came out of Louis Liquor store before. We have met Tino Aspria. Wow. Tino is quite rare. He's someone that lives yeah. in Colombia. I think the last time he came to Newcastle, we actually meet fans. It would be a good 10 years ago. Yeah. So it would be a long time ago. So I just want to say straight up, Rob, how did it feel? Yeah, it was good, mate. Literally, the, the moment he, saw, he came through the door, we spotted him. Next thing you know, you couldn't see him anymore because that many fans had ran straight over, got a hold of him, took him to the back. A seat with Mr. T was saved for him, um, and yeah, he was he was on the pint straight away, just as he'd expect, to be honest. But he's someone that is a, I guess, a bit historic with his fixture and some great times with Liverpool over the uh, years. But this is a, a real game, really. I feel like 
I, I especially those battles in the 90s, I, I feel like it's back. Like this Liverpool, Newcastle, live, whatever you call it, I think yeah. it's what intro you back. Obviously, Newcastle last season was able to get into the top four. First time we finished above Liverpool since 2011 12 season. What do you think about this fixture there? Ah, uh, well, I, was, I mean, the, the weather's not helping, like, but I said, you know, early start, bank holiday weekend. I think everyone's going to be on the beers. Everyone's very excited. The Eddie Howe Klopp rivalries there, and Newcastle are changing the dugouts, to, <laughs> which is, I, don't, I think it's just for aesthetic reasons, but it makes for a better story to say it's because Eddie Howe wants to make it so him and Tindall can be together. It's got a bit of a buzz behind it. I think it'll be tough though. There's stuff about whether Salah's going to play or not as well. I think that's, prob well, that's probably right. helped. But yeah, um, only team to do the doubles, double on us last season. Bit of payback a day would be nice. Skill prediction. Got 2-1 two, two Newcastle. I think we're good defensively, but I think they are a good team as well. I think, I think they might get a goal. You have to just make sure we score more than they do. Hi, my name is Kayla. And you guys might remember Kayla from a couple weeks ago. Over in Philadelphia, New Jersey. I mean, it's good to see you in the UK. It's good to see you over in Newcastle. You want to tell people about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I'm the uh, one of the admins of Toon Army Philadelphia. So I was one of the organizers of the Q&A and the tailgate in Philadelphia. So you might remember me from that video. Uh, but now I'm here back in Newcastle for the Liverpool match and I'm super excited. Well, I just want to mention this well, actually, well, because of the people such as South organising the tailgate, the club events all by the fellow down. You're actually in today's match day programme, aren't you? So, you want to tell people a little bit about that? Yeah. So, they're doing a little uh, a blurb in the, in the match day programmes now called Mags Around the World. And so, uh, Greg from our Philadelphia group was featured in the Aston Villa one, and I'm featured in today's. So, I'm excited I didn't even get to read it yet, although I know I, I answered it all myself so I can remember. <laughs> Well, I'm hoping to yeah. say some good things about you. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> no, but I just want to mention this for the fact that you actually are, despite the fact you're living in Fluto, you're actually in Newcastle as a season ticket holder. How long yeah. have you been a season ticket holder for? Uh, for two and a half years now. Yeah, so in the 21 22 season. Oh, was so my just first before one. the takeover, that month. Yeah, oh. yeah. I bought it when we were under Ashley and I was just excited to be able to go, but then obviously it took a turn for way better. Yeah. Uh, that's some luck for you getting a one more for the takeover but no it's a yeah. super pleasure to speak I just want to mention as well guys I did quite a lot of stuff behind the scenes at Kayla I was in fellow Delta it was so lovely to offer me food drink also too thank yeah, you so much Kayla it's great to see you in Newcastle and uh, congratulations to me in the program <laughs> thanks Adam <laughs> I know, I find you met Will, it's a, listen, this is an ultimate moment by the way, I appreciate it, I've been watching you since I was back oh, when I was 14, you, 15, so yeah. thank you so much, it's great to find you there. What do you think? Uh, I said 3-2, I, I backed 3-2, yeah, um, I think it'll be a, for sure. uh, attacking game, midfield battle I think, which side's more clinical on the day is yeah, what I'm going to back. I think it's all down to the midfield, I think hopefully that's where we're stronger. I just feel like the place is going to be fucking bouncing. Oh, no. Hopefully, hopefully. Well, where you're busy, so I'll let you crack on, but thank you so much for your chatting. Pleasure. Cheers, mate. Pleasure. Hi, it's Peter. Hi, it's Charlie. Charlie. Well, we're just bumping the Will and E before. I know you don't know much about Will, but I know Charlie's a big fan. He won 4 million subscribers the first time I personally met him. Absolute legend, may I say. You know much about him? Charlie, do you? Yeah, no, I, I think he does like a mix of all the different videos. I think he does like videos on FIFA and stuff like that, but it's great to see him in quite surprise, quite surprise at all. There was a lot of people obviously knew of him and he was really polite to Charlie. Charlie had his picture with him and he said, good luck, keep up with your YouTube channel. So it shows he's a really good guy. Uh, he's quite busy today. He's got stuff with Sky Sports and the Premier League, so I don't blame him for obviously having the wish out. But I want to ask you today, and I asked you last match, we won 5 1 against Villa at home last home game. Today against Liverpool, I think I would say slightly harder than Villa. I don't think there's much in it, to be fair. I think Villa are quite a solid team. 
Now, just like Aston Villa, so they had Benzia injured going into the match. Liverpool have Canali injured going into the game. So once again, it's a key player that Newcastle can't take advantage of. Going on the back of that City defeat last week, what are we saying today? I think it'll be a tough game. Obviously, Liverpool's midfield's very good. They've got, like, McAllister and Sabozlai, I think it's called. But um, I think it is going to be a close game, but I think Newcastle's going to win too. Well, surely you'll probably not remember, Adam, when Newcastle and um, the four three games against Liverpool. So at the day, I think it's going to be a, a fast-flowing game. And there's going to be a lot of goals, but I'm going to go 3-2 to Newcastle. Hi, my name's Lurton, 4-3 uh, to Newcastle, and I am... Um... Tenali, Isaac, Willock and Bruno. Hey guys, we are now here at the Food Bank. If you remember earlier in the week, I actually paid a visit across the Food Bank. I have a chance to go inside to show you guys when I'm doing any cast night video what goes on with it. I'm here today with a card receiver now, so I've actually already paid £400 on me. I'm about to pay the last 100 now. Pretty much, um, the reason why I'm doing this is because, well, 150 of that 500 is actually the money that I paid for a pair of check to your ear custom signing boots so that lady very nicely wanted me to donate that money to the food bank instead so that was a part of it the remaining 350 pounds of the site to find myself because i haven't got the murder title done yet so i thought it'd be a good incentive to actually donate to the food bank i think it's going to promote this well the last thing i kind of do is, is to promote this and go well um well actually it's a nice donate money to 100 families because ultimately there shouldn't be so many families needing food and i think that's kind of the most important part it's sad that i'm doing stuff like this and it shouldn't be the case here in the uk but unfortunately, I think the, the poverty rate for children in Newcastle is actually around 30 percent, which is shocking statistically. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to promote it now. It is a card receiver, so if you like coming down, you can actually donate money directly with your card. On a match day, it actually gets doubled by Jamie Newton. So my £500 donation there is actually a £1,000 donation, which will feed 100 families. So massive thank you to Jamie Root for doubling the amount. This is his third season, he's actually done this now. I just wanted to promote it. If you guys have some spare change, make sure I come here on a match day, donate. The poverty rate is going to increase towards Christmas time as well. It's just sad times. So I just want to promote it now. I have donated £500 to the food bank. That money will go to one hundred pounds a litre. So once again, guys, we're joined here by Charlie over yeah. TikTok. What are we thinking for this one? Anthony Gordon, your boy, is starting today. Of course he's starting. Uh, personally, I think it's going to be a 2-2 game. We're not going to win. We're not there just yet. But we're going to go 2-2. Score as Gordon and Isaac. Let's just keep it simple. Gordon, the break, the duct on that Chelsea game. Let's hope so. I hope he does, yes. Um, as you can hear, I already hear the Gordon chance in the background. Might be a bit hard to pick up, but he seems to be a fan favourite. Let's get the goals in today. I'm starting to head into the match now. Eddie Howe's decided to keep an unchanged 11 from the Manchester City game. Good corner. It was what I personally predicted. I think Eddie Howe is someone that lies back in his team. You gotta be honest, we lost one note to City last year. I mean, can you honestly drop players because of that? I know people probably want to see like to Harvey Bottoms in over a guy like Anthony Gorn, but for me, I, I think keeping with the same 11 is good. You want to give them the confidence. You don't want to suddenly dump out the team, then it might deflate them a bit. I think it's a good call to do. Let's say we, we drop points again, or some players don't particularly play well again. That's when I probably look at change. But Eddie Howe's obviously went, but you know what? It was a one match where we could have done a bit better but I'm not going to change the squad because of that and I do agree with his stance I backed us to win 3-2 today however the mags
Liverpool fans trying to spit on your castle fans. I didn't see exactly what happened, but continue to walk up. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching that. I know for Newcastle fans, it's depressing, it's disappointing. We don't want to look back in the loss, but we have to look back in order to proceed forward. Eddie Howe, this coaching stuff, they'll all be analysing that game. How did Newcastle lose it? They have to pinpoint everything and so we can go again. The players have to take responsibility. I've seen so many people pointing the finger. Eddie Howe, you shouldn't have made this sub, you shouldn't have made that sub. Listen, it doesn't matter about the subs. Newcastle, the only reason we didn't score a second goal is because we missed chances. Who do we blame there? You don't blame Eddie Howe, you blame the players for that. The players missed opportunity time after time after time again. I know a lot of people probably will be pointing that finger towards Alan Warren. He had a good five opportunities, didn't score a single chance. But I think it's harsh to criticise Eddie Howe. I definitely don't agree with some of the subs. Um, Robert that for being an individual reason, for example, Tonardi coming off. But listen, we can't blame Eddie Howe for losing that game. We didn't score a second goal on the pitch. That's individual performances. That's a player, a collective team unit. We, we as a team lost that game. We can't just point the finger, manager, you've done this sub, so shouldn't have done that. Listen, lads, we, we didn't score the 60 minutes before, before Eddie Howe started making those subs. We only got one person to blame, that's ourselves. I think the players collectively have to blame themselves. Yes, okay, maybe a bit of blame on the manager, a bit of blame on the coach and stuff. But listen, we as a team have to blame us, the players. And that's my honest opinion on it. But thank you guys for watching anyway. Take care and I'll see you all in the next one.